this is Charlie with HotTipsCentral.com and today I'm here to show you how to enable multi-touch gestures on iPhone 4 while running iOS 4.3.1. Now in order to do this you're going to need to be jailbroken. If you haven't done that yet, go ahead and click the link that pops up right now uh, in the corner there and uh, you know, go through the process of jailbreaking if you want these multi-touch gestures. Uh, if you're not really sure what they are, I can give you a brief background. Uh, back when 4.3 was being beta tested, the Apple introduced new features like multi-touch gestures where you could pinch in and out with four or five fingers or swipe left and right and it would do a variety of different things on the phone. However, when the official release came out, those features were not included. Uh, if you want to enable them on the iPhone, however, you are perfectly able to do that by simply following what I'm about to show you right now. So let's get started. First, I'll introduce you to my iPhone. Here it is right here. Uh, and if you see that this is right here. Now, normally with the multi-touch gestures enabled, I would be able to swipe, uh, let's say I was inside an app here, and I would be able to swipe uh, left and right with four fingers, and I would be able to move back and forth between applications. That's just SB settings. Uh, also, I would be able to pinch my fingers in and out, and that would, you know, be able to open, the, or, I'm sorry, return to the springboard and stuff like that. Uh, it's kind of it's not really the most intuitive thing on such a small screen, um, but it is still cool to kind of have it in case you want to just play around with it, like I'm going to do. Anyway, to enable this, you're going to need two things. Well, you're going to need more than two things, but you're going to need to know your IP address of your phone, which is pretty easy. If you have SB settings, just go ahead and swipe in the top, and it will show you your IP address right there. If you do not have SB settings, you're going to need to go to the Settings application, then go to Wi-Fi. And then you're going to hit the little blue uh, button there. That's uh, yeah, the little blue button. That's the arrow on your Wi-Fi wi network, and that will show you your IP address right there. And so mine is 10.0.1.6. So you're going to need to know that. Then, then after that's all said and done, you can follow the steps here. Now, uh, you'll see I have a folder open in front of me. It's a it's a window that you can get to if you navigate to our website and download the file. Um, and again, all these steps are laid out for you in text in case the video isn't quite good enough and you want to know things specific, they're right there too. So, the link in the description. So to do this, you're going to need an SSH client. Uh, you can use uh, CyberDuck, WinSCP, you can really use anything you're comfortable with. I'm going to use CyberDuck for this particular tutorial. And the second thing you're going to need is a program in Cydia from your jailbroken iPhone called OpenSSH. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, just go ahead and grab it. It's free, it's a very quick download. And that will allow you to do this step. It'll allow you to have root or to gain uh, root access to the drive of your phone. So to do this, you're going to need to connect to the same Wi-Fi network as your computer. Now we've already just already kind of discussed that. I'm on the same network as my computer is, and now I'm fully able to get access to it. From your SSH client, you're going to want to open a connection. And this might be a similar interface for you. I don't know how yours is because it's your program, but Whatever you have to do to connect to a server or open a connection, do that. So that's open. The second thing you're going to want to do is make sure that the drop down menu is set to SSH File Transfer Protocol. That's this one right here, or SFTP. And then in the server box, or equivalent, again, I don't know your program, you're going to want to uh, type in on the server your IP address of your iPhone. So I just, I just learned what mine was, so I'll type that in. In the username setting, if you haven't changed your root password yet, and I highly recommend you do if you're going to continue to do this, you can delete OpenSSH after this if, you're, if, you're, if you want. But if you decide to keep it, I highly recommend you, um, excuse me, I highly recommend that you change your root password because it's a huge security risk to you and all your information and your phone and everything else that's important to you with your electronic device uh, that can easily be accessed by anyone. Uh, and all they have to do is know that the default username is root. And the pa default password is A-L-P-I-N-E, that's Alpine. This is the default password for all iPhones uh, spread throughout the galaxy. Um, and if you decide to, you know, if you decide you want to keep this, you should change that. And that tutorial is on our website as well. So you can go ahead and follow that and change your root password. Anyway, when you're done with that, you've got your, your username, I'm sorry, you got your username and password. You have the correct uh, IP address here. And you have the SSH file transfer protocol selected. Hit connect. This will connect to your iPhone and it will present you with the root of your phone. So uh, I'm going to go ahead into the actual root, that's the slash, and this is the um, all your files inside my phone. 
So we're going to want to navigate to certain directories to change certain files. Well, how do we know where to go? In the file that I gave you, or the link that I gave you to download, there are three folders inside the zip file. And each folder is named uh, to the directory that you need to go in. So for instance, this folder here is named System, Library, Core Services, Springboard.app. Now, I didn't make these, fo these files. I, didn't, uh, I, did, I don't take credit for them at all. I got them from another site, uh, from another video, and I've credited them in the, in the link as well as in the website as well. So if you want to go check them out, feel free to do so. But these do work, and it's a really, really awesome and intuitive setup to have them uh, name the folders named um, for the directory. So that's what we're going to use. And essentially, what you're going to need to do is inside the folder, you'll see a file, and that's file. You're going to use that file and replace the existing file on your on your phone. All these files already exist in your phone. These are just modified. So open up CyberDuck here, and we're going to navigate to the system, library, core services, and Springboard.app. So here we go. So it's system, library, core services, and springboard.app. And inside that file, and inside that folder, you're going to see a file named n90ap.plist. And so we're going to go ahead and replace that. Now before you replace it, this is crucial. Please don't do this without, don't do this process without backing up these files. Click the file and drag it to your hard drive. This will transfer it, and now it's on your desktop. Now you've got it backed up. You don't have to worry about it being deleted on you, which is crucial. Now I'll go ahead and take this piece of PLIST file and drag it in. It will ask you if you wish to overwrite it. Just say yes, and it will overwrite the file for you. And there you go. So now that file has been transferred. The next one is, let's just do this one, Applications and Preferences. So we'll go back out. Back, 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 and applications. Here's applications, and preferences is right here. Good. And now we need to adjust or save these two. This is there's general and there's settings. So in the general p list and the settings p list. So find general. Uh, general is right here, and go ahead and just drag that to the desktop. Again, make sure you save these before you replace them have to have a way to get things back to normal if something messes up. And now find settings, which is right here. Nope, here. There you go. Settings plist. Again, drag it to the desktop. And now that's saved. Good. Backed up. Wonderful. Take these two files and put them into the set and put them into the folder. Again, it'll ask you to if you want to overwrite, just go ahead and say continue. And it will overwrite those two files in your drive. Wonderful. One more down. One, one more to go, rather. Two down, one to go. The next one is uh, VAR, Mobile Library and Preferences. So what do we do next? Let's go back to the main root of our phone here. Here we go. And we're going to go to various or VAR, Mobile, Library, and preferences right here and there we are and inside that we're going to load this com.apple springboard.plist so find that file com.apple springboard plist springboard plist springboard plist right here there it is and again you're going to want to just take that and drag it to the desktop make sure it's backed up nice good and now replace. And that's it. So we've, we've, we've backed up the old files and we replaced them with the new files. I can't talk tonight, I'm sorry. So that's all you're going to have to do. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to reboot our phone. So go ahead and shut the phone off. Turn it back on. Let me get my camera back. Go ahead and shut the phone off. Turn it back on. You may be able to just respring this. I don't know. I usually just reboot it. It might work if you respring, but I'm going to reboot because that's the safe thing to do. All right, go ahead and turn it back on.
and we're back. It took a little longer to boot up this time. It's got a few files that changed. You'll notice a progress bar there during the boot up. And now we're going to go ahead and, I can't see it, there it goes, I'm going to unlock. And here's our springboard again. And we can enable certain features on the springboard. So let's just open up uh, Safari here. Actually, let's show you the settings menu real quick. Go ahead and show you the settings menu. And you'll see on the top here is multitask multitasking gestures. Now this can be placed anywhere in the settings, but in this particular case, it's up on top. And also, there's one more. I just have to find it. And inside the general settings menu, if you scroll up, you will see this little section here. It says use slide switch to lock, rotation, or mute. Now on the iPhone, you can choose what this little switch does. Do you want it to lock your rotation, or do you want it to mute the phone? Right now it's set to automatic mute. If I say lock rotation instead, and select that, then when I rotate the phone and everything in an app, it will lock it instead. So on the multitasking bar right now, I pull this up, multitasking bar right now, you will see that this is a black box, and that black box is for muting and unmuting. Pretty cool, mute, unmute. And now the normal rotation lock is located on the side. So here's my mailbox, and normally when you turn mail to the side, it will go to the side, normally. But I have low rotation locked right now, so it won't. Because huh. I have my phone in silent. So here you go, here's this. If you rotate it, it will do its thing. And if you select the switch on the top now, it will lock the rotation in portrait. Pretty cool. Okay, and you may have noticed a little bit of a jump in the video there, had a little bit of a cough, skipped ahead, but the phone is still just here, just as we left it. And now we're gonna take a look and demo the multi-touch gestures for this particular uh, little tweak. Um, we're gonna need to open a few apps though because I don't have any open in my multitasking bar. So let's go ahead and tweak that. Let's open up uh, iTunes, let's open up Weather, we'll open up the Maps application, Stocks, and I think Notes, and that's probably good. We probably don't need to open up anymore. So I've got some apps open on my phone now. And to switch between those now, we can use multi-touch gestures. So I'm going to open up, uh, let's open up Mail. It's just another application open, right? So here I have Mail open, and I can go ahead and swipe between them by just flicking through them. That's the wrong way. So let's go the right way this time. There we go. And flip through that. And flip through that. It's like turning pages in a book. It's actually pretty, pretty, pretty cool. And it kind of flows with it as you drag it. So it's it, it doesn't, it's not just really skippy and choppy, it's true Apple style, nice and smooth. And because it's, it's a native feature, really. It was it was demoed in beta and now it's back. So this is this is native feature. This is a feature developed by Apple, but they just didn't put in the final release. And so there's your multitasking. Now if you want to get to your multitasking bar, uh, what you gotta do there, hang on, let me get what you gotta do to your multitasking bar is swipe up with your fingers. So swipe up and there's your multitasking bar. You can swipe down to bring it back down. Whoops actually swipe down, not up. <laughs> I'm not facing the phone, so it's hard. So there you go. See it facing up and multitask down. So there's that. And the last bit is the pinch. And you can pinch to get to back to the home screen. So we can go ahead and just pinch and go back to the home screen. Pretty simple there. That's really easy. So you go to home here and you can just pinch and it sucks it right back into the home screen. And I believe this also works uh, with going slow too. So if you take and just drag really slowly. No, well, you gotta go fast with that one. <laughs> Maybe it's just the stocks app, I don't know. But anyway, so there's your multi-touch gestures. Uh, you can get them for iOS 4.3.1 right there. Again, if you haven't jailbroken your phone on iOS 4.3.1 yet, go ahead and click the link. Uh, let's put it right there. Go ahead and click that link right there and we'll walk you through how to do that. If you need to upgrade to iOS 4.3.1, you can click the link right there. And if you want to do it without preserving your base, you probably want to do it without preserving your baseband. So that link right there, that link right there, can't figure out which way, that link right there will actually help you out. So anyway, yeah, visit us at hottipcentral.com for more information and also the link in the description will walk you through all the files that you need to do this.